Good morning, everybody. Hope you had an amazing Father's Day yesterday. Happy Monday. We are talking about wide receiver deals, steals, a.k.a. sleepers, wide receivers that are great value for fantasy football 2024. Speaking of great value, Tim, a.k.a. the bald guy, has a great value haircut going today. Oh, yeah, buddy. You know how much money I save in product and time wasted? It's simple. Absolutely. Body, body wash, if anything, you're good to go. Just take a little, uh, you know, a uh, straight razor to the scalp and away Ooh, you go. Not a straight <laughs> razor. I'm not that good. <laughs> All right, Tim, are you ready to talk wide receivers? Because there's a ton of value this year at the wide receiver position, man. Absolutely. I mean, some of these guys, eh, they're suspect. You're putting them on because they're wide receiver ones on their team, but their teams are ass. Yeah. So we're going to dive into that. Tim and I are going to have a debate because there's literally – you know, a player that he's got on this list as we're going through an open discussion here about these wide receiver values that I don't really, I'm not fond of. So we're going to, we're going to rip into him on that. Before we get to this guy, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up, drop a comment below. Let me know a wide receiver sleeper or a value or a deal that you think is great value this year at wide receiver. Drop it below. Excited to talk, to, to hear your feedback and also grab the 16 round drafts. which you can use code smash to save sleepers, breakouts, auto players, drafts, reach round. Everything you need to smash your leagues, guys. You'll be light years ahead of the Kinsheep says, guys, grab 16 rounds right now. I've linked it below. All right, Tim. Let's dive into it. Let's dive into wide receiver sleepers for fantasy football 2024. All right, let's dive into it. And you know how we start the shows. If there is news, the latest news and notes here, let's dive into it. We now have breaking news. All right, I really want to dive into it. A couple of things I want to address. First thing I want to talk about here that got a lot of noise on my social media because I posted it. And I don't know if you saw it, Tim, but Bill Belichick, 72 years old, dating a 24-year-old cheerleader. I had some mixed feelings. Some people were, yeah, go Bill. Some people were like, ah, that's gross. And I did some math. I'm not good at math. But the guy was 48 years old when she was born, I believe, 60 years old when she was 12. Like, dude, I mean, I'm all about like, yeah, you know, get what you can get. But this is not love, man. Like, there's no way she's either A, interested in his looks or B, his personality because he's got the personality of, a, you know, maybe a, a wall. So I'm just like, dude, like, this is the type of stuff that annoys me. Like, that's a huge age gap, 72 to 24, Tim. I don't know. I want to hear your thoughts on it. What do you think? Well, first of all, didn't Kanye sing a song about something like this? I'm not sure. I'm not too uh, up to Oh, you're right not now. the Kanye type? I yeah. ain't saying she a gold. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She's yes. digging for the gold for sure. But listen, I don't know, man. You never know. It, it's really hard to think that they have that much in common. But uh, weirder things have happened. I mean, no matter what, he's got the cash. He can he can afford all the toys, going out all the time, keeping her entertained. Let's put it that way. Who knows what else he brings? I don't know. I don't want to get into it. It is kind of gross in some ways. But yeah. Wouldn't you think it's more gross for her than it is for him? Well, so it's gross for both of them. Bo I think they're both sick by doing it. But again, I have young daughters. That's why I've kind of gotten into more like this is kind of gross. She's somebody's daughter, man. And the fact is, imagine you bring home wrinkly old Bill Belichick. He's 72 years old. It's like that meme you see with um, I don't know if you've seen that meme. You remember Penguin from um from uh what do you call it? From Batman Returns, Penguin, Danny yeah, DeVito. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's basically like, you know, when he's in that in that machine or he's in his car or whatever, he's flying that thing. I don't know what he's doing in the movie. And he's like, ah, ah, ah and it's got this ugly face. And underneath him, yeah, they've got this meme where he's kind of doing that. And it's like that girl that plays uh Wonder Woman. And she's like, yeah. kind of looks like she's moaning. But I can again, I don't want to give you a visual of Bill Belichick, but it's literally like it's gross, basically, like that meme with the penguin on top of uh, Wonder Woman. Anyways, I just had to share my thoughts on that, man. It just it got a little bit graphic there. But anyway, I just wanted to share that because it was in the news. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing really in the news here. Kansas City Chiefs uh, Marquise Brown earned praise from Patrick Mahomes during minicamp. He says, I thought Hollywood did a great job coming in and being prepared and learning really fast, says Pat Mahomes. Again, it's just, you know, just everybody kind of, tooting their own horns, really. Yeah, nobody goes on there and says, you know what, he came in, he was absolute garbage, he couldn't run the routes worth crap, blah, blah. No. No. All love and rainbows. That's what I hate, man. Everybody's like rainbows and butterflies and sunshines. Uh, Malik Neighbors impressed QB uh, Daniel Jones during practice. I mean, he could do everything Jones says. 
There is not much he can't do from a running standpoint. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands and strong, fast, explosive, and catches the ball well. We know Malik Neighbors was great out of college, and this is not a surprise. The big question is, Daniel Jones, are you going to be able to feed him the ball? That is the question. Absolutely. So, yeah, nothing else. I don't want to dive into too much more. It's just like, again, like headlines like that. And then Mike Williams, who sucks. I'm not a fan of him. Uh, said he believes he could be a compliment uh, to wide, wide receiver Garrett Wilson. He says, I could be big. I could be physical. I could do it, man. I could do it. You know, it's just like, it's just stupid stuff. It's nothing like same old, you know? Yeah. Put me in coach. Put me in coach. I could do it, you know? So again, nothing really there. All right, let's get to these wide receiver sleepers. Again, make sure you guys do grab that 16 round draft solution. Slap it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. Let's dive into it, Tim. Uh, the first guy here is George Pickens. I think he's a great value this year, sitting at wide receiver 32. Had himself a great campaign last year, just over 1,000 yards, 1140, five touchdowns, 106 targets, 63, uh, 63 receptions. Did it with. Kenny Pickett. Now he does get a slight upgrade, I would say, in Russell Wilson, who hasn't been out. He had a good year last year, but it's not the same Russell Wilson from Seattle. Um, but again, he's got more competition there. They've got Pat Fryer moved him. They've got rookie Roman Wilson. They got Jalen Warren catching the ball in the backfield. He looked dynamic. Um, so again, George Pickens is the one, but now Deontay Johnson shipped off. I don't know, man. I think he's just a steal. Wide receiver 32, and you're getting a theoretical wide receiver one kind of mid-rounds, so that's not bad. You know what I hate about you doing this, though, is you say wide receiver 32, wide receiver. When you go into your draft, do you look for wide receiver 32? No, but that's how everybody, like, I don't copy everybody, you know? But I know you don't, but it drives me nuts because no. nobody goes into their draft and says, no. I got to get me wide receiver 32. No, but that's how you describe them. He's wide receiver 32 amongst it, wide receivers. Give it both ways. He is a late fifth round pick, which to me, yes, he's the one on the team. I have not been enamored with Pittsburgh for so long now. It's been like five years since Pittsburgh's been good. So yeah. I, I'm not thrilled about it. And you said, oh, but they got Wilson. They got Fields. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I don't mm -hmm. care. Hustle yeah. Russell ain't got much hustle anymore. Let's put Look, it that way, man. I'm not excited about George Pickens. And another thing, there is talk. There was rumors that Brandon Ayuk made an end up there. Because, again, there's contract issues. Apparently, Ayuk got offered $26 million, hasn't accepted it. So there's some drama going on there. So I'm a little concerned about another wide receiver coming in. And, you know, even the fact that they are flirting with that is a concern, Tim, because now – do you have faith in George Pickens? The fact that you're even entertaining bringing somebody else in, that's that's a bit of a concern. So George Pickens, I got my question marks about you. Yeah, that's to it. me, we're picking. you're picking a guy here too high when we're going to give you a bunch of other guys that are so much better value that can easily put up the same amount of points. Absolutely. All right, next guy here. I think we're going to have a debate here, Tim. I actually have a spirited debate. You ready for this one? Is it I Adam? I got an Adam Thielen. I got a Thielen. We're going to argue about this, dude. I like, don't give a damn, Thielen. Wide receiver 62. Mind you, he is value. We are talking deals and sleepers, right? I mean, what is the deal with Adam? Th I mean, they brought in Deontay Johnson, who was the one with Pittsburgh last year, even though Pickens kind of outdid him in many statistical categories. But, hey, he was still the one there. And then now he comes in. You got Bryce Young, who's got his share question. Right? They got Jonathan Brooks, who could be a great running back out of the backfield coming off that knee injury. And, you know, they've got Xavier Leggett, Deontay Johnson, Jonathan Brooks, and they and they got Jatavian Sanders at tight end who could be a guy to catch the ball as well. Why feel it? He's old. He's washed. Let, let First of all, I'm not enamored with the team in general at all, but still Adam Thielen in like the 11th round. Are you freaking uh, kidding me? Last year, he had like a hundred receptions over a thousand yards. Touchdowns were pitiful. And that's where Thielen normally does very well. Give him those high single digit, even low double digit. So to me, he is still a worthy pick. Yes. He's getting up there in his career. I think this is uh, I think he's 32 now. He's up um, there. Yeah, sounds right. He, he's getting up there. But either way, man, like this is value. I don't care if you like the guy personally or not, or you think he's washed, still holds a place, still holds value, especially at that kind of pick. He can hold a place on your roster because I'm not touching him. You know, uh, just again, I washed up. I think again, he just, I like those upside wide receivers and he's just not it. He doesn't excite me at all. Yeah, I'm there's not. not there's not a high ceiling here. Don't get me wrong. This is a a safe 200 to 250 late in the draft. And Tim's into that thrift stuff. He does like a lot of garage sailing in the past. I know Tim likes the deals and and, and I feel that like Thielen is like that 
dollar general thrift store kind of guy. Like, I, you know, he's a deal. He, he's going to win you a couple of weeks, but if you play him every week, he's going to cost you some weeks too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not excited about him at all. Uh, let's go here again. I, I like a little more upside here. Again, we're going from one extreme to the other. I love this guy. I want to talk about him as Lad McConkey. I'm going to keep talking about him in videos here, Tim. I absolutely love him. There's so much to be excited about. Young, dynamic player, great route runner, smooth hands, and listen to this. Again, I've been hearing things. I just read this report. Ready for this. Here we go. Again, we keep talking about these players, you know, kind of, you know, whatever, promoting their own guys, tooting their own horns. But wide receiver, Lad McConkey has impressed QB Justin Herbert this offseason with his work ethic. He says, quote, it's like he's been a four or five year vet. He understands the game. He understands leverage. He's a smart player and he's very athletic. I'm really looking forward to getting him the ball. Herbert said to McConkey said, said of McConkey 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 22 is expected to be a major role in the chargers offense. And that being said, I can reassure you that this is going to be a real thing because literally Eckler is gone. He was a PPR monster at running back. That's all he did is catch the ball. So more check downs to McConkey and Keenan Allen's gone. So if this guy can be that reliable Keenan Allen replacement, boom, you've got yourself a top five, top 10 wide receiver. I love Lad McConkey. And listen to this wide receiver 49 at the time of this recording draft lad McConkey on all rosters draft lad McConkey on all rosters. Look at the camera draft McConkey. Listen, the price is good. But this is a team full of mediocre talent now. And I mean, every position is mediocre. So even here, you got Lad McConkey, Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnson, DJ Chark. It's, it's a, the, whatever. It's a crapshoot. It's all garbage. They got Brendan Rice. Brendan I'm not Rice. excited about of, any the of, of them. The son of Jerry Rice is there. We got some pedigree here. <laughs> Great. So maybe he's worth more of a take than Laddie. <laughs> other, other than saying his name there's nothing great about this guy i i don't see it i mean i'm even going back looking at his college stats average size average weight average height numbers weren't fantastic in college like there's nothing exciting here i don't know why your heart oh, you are so sleeping much. okay we're gonna come back to this video and tim is part of the can so you think he's no he tim be... looks at the stats looks at the numbers that you have available no, looks at this it. crappy team that's why I'm the visionary, and you, sir, are following the Kinshipsis. Have you been watching more Kinshipsis YouTube videos? How many Kinshipsis are are telling you to hold off on Lad? Well, he's he. Well, no, they like. They, I think they like him, but I'm just well, saying. Then, I'm not a Kinshipsis because I don't like him. I don't. No. You know, like I said, other than the the cost that you're paying for him, and he could potentially do well. He's not going to blow anybody away this year. I like I said, will. team full of mediocre talent. I think he will. I think he's going to get force fed. I think he's going to be the guy that he's going to rely on because Quentin Johnson proved that he wasn't. They just hate Quentin Johnson. I don't know what it is. And maybe you could say, well, he's not that good of a player. He's got brick for hands. His hands are like, you know, bricks. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, he had the opportunity to shine. QJ did last year with Mike Williams out, as I said, he'd be, and, and Keenan Allen out, as I said, he'd be missing the last three weeks of your season last year. And Quentin Johnson couldn't do anything. So they just don't like him. They hate him. But they love Lad McConkey. I'm telling you, Lad McConkey is going to be a top 10 wide. Wide receiver and fantasy points, maybe even top five. You're you heard good. it here. No, I'm, I'm absolutely right. I'm absolutely right. He's he's gonna be amazing. So we'll see. Remember this video. All right. Call me crazy. All right. Next guy here, I think you're high on him. Khalil Shakira. I call him Shakira. It's Khalil let's, Shakira. Let's just put these two both together. Let's say yeah. Khalil Shakir and Keon Coleman, because to me, it's gonna be either one of these guys in Buffalo. And of course, it is going to be the tight end as no. well, Kincaid. There's a lot of targets up for grabs. Yeah. There's no clear standout. You're pushing Coleman hard as well. Like that's yeah. what you do, man. You're all about the rookies and pushing them too hard. It's they the may do well, but still you've got to keep their value right. No. no, I think you're right. It's the position that they're in. The position. Assume the position, right? And and to me, Keon's got one of the best positions, especially for his value right now. That's for yeah. damn sure. And the thing is, you got to look at the talent around him, like Curtis Samuel. What has he done? And what annoys me is I, I was seeing other people talking about it. Again, I don't watch other fantasy channels that much. I, I kind of see things come across my feed, even Bulls. And, uh, Bulls. I'm sorry, I think of the Chicago Bulls. No, Buffalo Bills analysts saying, oh, you know what? Curtis Samuel's going to be the guy. I'm like, no, he's not. Years to while, we're now out. And they can say, well, he didn't have a good situation there. Blah, blah, blah. And his old team. I think he was with the Panthers for a bit. But anyway, Whatever, whatever team he was on. I don't even know because I don't care. I don't like Curtis Samuel. He sucks. So Keon Coleman, he's going to be the guy. I'm telling you right now. And Khalil Shakir could be good too, but I think he was banged up a couple days ago in practice. 
Anyway, Keon Coleman is a guy, but either way, they're both great value. And here's another thing that bothers me here, Tim. Here's another thing that really gets me this year that we got to address here. So you've got Khalil Shakir as like wide receiver 63, and you got Keon Coleman coming off round seven to nine. Both these guys are immense value, and they got Josh Allen throwing the ball. Josh Allen was like fifth in passing attempts last year. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And you guys, you're getting these guys for value, and like people are scared of them, but yet you're willing to take Nico Collins round three and then Diggs round three or four type thing, and then Dell round five because CJ Stroud's on the ball. It's so weird. And then and then also Debo and Ayuk, you're risking and you're not sure who the one is there, but you're willing to risk a third round pick on it. That's what doesn't make sense. You see what I'm saying, Tim? These oh, yeah. guys are value. So either one of these, I like Keon, but I'd rather take my risk later, right? Yeah. I, I like I like both of these guys at the price. Like that's what I'm saying. They're both value, and if either one goes off, great. Yeah, absolutely. One of one of them's going to. It's just a matter of which one. I believe it's Keon. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, next guy here I want to talk about is Romeo Dobbs. Similarly, I just want to you know talk about this guy real quick, and let's just talk about this. Let's wrap this up. We got Dobbs, and the next guy is Demario Douglas. Let's put these guys together here. I'll kind of flash both them on the screen here. Both these guys are in a situation where, you know, Douglas is kind of listed as the one. Dobbs is kind of listed as the wide receiver three. But when I looked at the playoff game, Tim, Dobbs was the, the guy that love was going to. So I look at both these situations. And again, similarly, and Demario Douglas, dude, he slated as the one. They brought they drafted Jalen Polk, high draft capital. Um, and again, both these guys, they're like wide receiver 71. The other guy's like wide receiver 78, something stupid like that. They're, they're literally going undrafted for the most part. And, you know, I guess the big part is the quarterback, right? The rookie quarterback. So it's like, okay, well, at least I could take a risk on these guys later, right? And you're still going with some of these guys early, going Justin Jefferson round. I know it's Justin Jefferson. The talent is there. But you're going with a guy with a rookie quarterback round one. When these guys are going undrafted, you get the wide receiver one on the Patriots. Or you can get Dobbs, who's got Jordan Love, who's proven for absolutely free later on as well. Man, I, I don't know. I'm looking at the deals here. Look at the deals. Deals. See, now, on Green Bay, though, I'm thinking it could be either Jaden Reed or Romeo Dobbs, but I do tend to lean a little more towards Dobbs. So you still got two fairly decent wide receivers there. New England, what a crap team. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, talk know. about falling from grace. Holy crap. They are just yeah. nothing right now. Mind you, Drake May, if he comes in, I don't think he's going to get the immediate start, but... He is a big body dude. Did you see his stat? 6'5, 220. And yeah, he can run. I don't know what the exact words were, but apparently, um, Pat, um, Pat Mahomes, why am I saying Pat? Uh, Tom Brady was coaching him, giving him some words of encouragement, right? So maybe he's got some good mentorship there. Who knows? Um, but at the end of the day, man, these guys, we're talking deals, we're talking sleepers, we're talking value. Why not roll the dice on a Demario Douglas or a Jalen Polk later, right? And again, Romeo Dobbs is great value because, again, what I'm looking at is the playoff games. He was the one, number one target. He was the main guy. So it's like, okay, when push comes to shove, Love leaned on Dobbs. And Watson's got his hamstring thing. He's kind of slated as the one. He can't stay on the field. Got Jaden Reed, a little smaller guy. You know, young. it's tough, man. But but it, as again, you're not wasting a first, second, third, fourth, or fifth round pick. You're getting these guys for a value, a deal. That's what the name of the show is, deals. That's it. That's it, Tim. Uh, anything else you want to add here? I mean, who do you love out of all these guys that's got like top? Do you don't you think McConkey's gonna get top ten upside? No, man. I think you're dreaming. Top ten for this guy? No. You need Justin Herbert to be like prime for this. And Justin Herbert hasn't been prime for a little while now. So I think you're I think you're really stretching on this one. I'll tell you what, give me any of the Buffalo receivers, including Kincaid on the tight end. Give me all of them. You know, I'll yeah. take them all. I don't care. Let's stack that baby right up. Yeah, great value. Tim likes the deals. I like the deals as well, the sleepers. So all these guys, great value. So we've got, again, just to recap here, uh, George Pickens could be value. Just be careful with the AUK situation at the time it's recording. You never know. Might end up being the two there. Adam Thielen, I got a feeling this is going to be a bust. He's not going to do well. Tim disagrees. Lad McConkey to love all over him. Uh, Demario Douglas, I think Polk or him could be the one. Again, all predicated on the quarter, the rookie quarterback. Khalil Shakir Coleman, Eileen Coleman there for sure. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, I think he's the best value out of the three and could be the one You know, in Green Bay. Nobody knows. Everybody's speculating at this point. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. There's other values as well. If you want all the answers, grab the 16-round draft solution, guys. I've linked it below. Use code SMASH to save. Anything else, Tim, you want to say to everybody? 
All good, brother. I just hope everybody had a great Father's Day. Yeah, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. I'm going to be here every morning at 7 a.m. And Tim's going to be here. I think you're going to be here. We're going to aim for you to be Mondays and Thursdays. You're going to catch the bald guy. That's the way it's been so far for the last month and a half. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll talk soon, guys. Thank you. Enjoy your day. And uh, make sure you guys grab those deals and 16 rounds. Use code SMASH. There's another deal for you. We'll talk soon. Have a good one.